there's no place like the Cube. We will start this episode with a moment of silence for O'Shea Sibley. Family, it's your favorite queer radio personality, Anna Deshaun, and this is the Queer News Summer Interview Series. Y'all already know I've been changing it up for the summer to take a little break from the research and script writing and to avoid the dreaded pie fade. As you also know, we are not forgetting about our top queer news stories. I'll be sharing a couple of stories you should know before we jump into the interview for the week. Now, before I get into this week's episode, I got two things. First, I want to officially welcome all of our new listeners. I'm so glad you're here. And now that you are, if you are digging our intersectional take on the weekly, consider joining the Q Crew. The Q Crew is our queer news community. I started it to help us grow the podcast. You'll get weekly emails from me, which include a recap of top stories and an uncut video from me on the latest happenings with me, Queer News, The Cube, E3 Radio, Child Life, okay? (laughs) With your monthly support, we can bring you more stories celebrating our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and comrade communities. We have 23 paid subscribers today. You think we can get to 50 by the end of the year? It all starts at $5 a month. Family, if you want to join these beautiful folks and be a part of the Q Crew, click the link in the show notes today. Second, our tour update. Yes, Queer News is on tour with the Q. The Q is your black and brown and queer version of Spotify. Somebody told me that and I'm with it. I'm looking to connect and meet new people, build a foundation for this platform. That will be long standing. And that comes with building relationships. That comes with taking big leaps of faith, okay? And we did that. Each activation has been so different, and I am loving it. And it's helping us to expand our reach. Next, we head to Denver, then Minneapolis, Atlanta, and Baltimore. I am still looking for sponsorship support. And if you want to bring our podcast listening experience to your city, just let me know. There is a link in the show notes with all the details. Now for a quick glance at the top queer news stories for this week. O'Shea Sibley, we speak your name today. I opened the podcast with a chant that could be heard this past week in Brooklyn to honor his life. I honestly thought about that being the whole podcast, just that chant, and playing it on repeat a few times in honor of O'Shea. The way they took his life was disgusting and it was heartless. Now, For those who may not have heard, O'Shea Sibley was a 28-year-old black gay man, professional dancer, who was murdered at a gas station in Brooklyn for voguing. Quite literally, I'm not exaggerating. He was literally killed for voguing. Him and his friends were dancing to Beyonce's Renaissance when a group of men, Muslim men, approached them yelling and spewing homophobic slurs. A 17-year-old that was in that group stabbed O'Shea, and he was pronounced dead at the hospital. And his community organized a rally and balled at that gas station where he was killed. Folks spoke, folks prayed, and then it's reported that someone scattered rose petals on the sidewalk, and then the people began to dance. They began to vogue. That 17-year-old turned himself in, but I want to make it very clear on this podcast that that whole group that approached O'Shea and his friends, they killed O'Shea Sibley that day. All of them. The whole group. I also have to say that all of this anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans rhetoric happening right now is also to blame. Shame on all of them. All of them. Josiah John T. Robinson, we speak your name today a black gay man who was found murdered on the beach in Grenada, the place he was from. 
He was loved. He was accepted by his family. He had the courage to not only come out, but pursue his love for music in spite of the homophobic policies in Grenada, in spite of the rampant homophobia. I didn't hear about his story until I saw a headline that Tyler Perry was offering a $100,000 reward for answers about his murder. From what I can tell in my research, I can tell Jonty embodied courage. And his music was good. It was good, y'all. He lived his life unapologetically. And I pray that we all just have a mustard seed, a mustard seed of his courage, the courage it took to be who he was in Grenada. May those that loved him find some peace. Family, y'all already know, (laughs) I rarely lead or end queer news with sad news, you know, but that is what this week brings. That is what it is. I'm sad. My heart hurts for their families and for the families that don't make the headlines. But I'm not dropping the mic and walking away in this moment. I really want to lead us into this really beautiful conversation that was had this week in Atlanta at the Saving Ourselves Symposium, SOS, conference organized by the Southern AIDS Coalition, SAC. I am so grateful for SOS and for SAC because I was awarded a full scholarship to attend. That's the only way I'm here, literally recording in an empty room in this hotel before I jump on a plane back home. I am not an HIV worker, but I do consider myself an HIV advocate now because of the time that I've spent with them the last two years. SOS is the place that I recorded the first two interviews for Black HIV in the South, How Do We Get Here? The first Cube original that we ever released. So SOS is a special place for me. I knew last year that they were doing God's work. And I hope to spread their good work with the platforms I've built. So with that in mind, (laughs) there's a link in the show notes for you to go donate to them, okay? So that they can give more folks like me scholarships to attend this beautiful, divine, community-driven conference. It is truly unlike any conference I attend all year round, period. (laughs) This conversation that I'm sharing is actually the Friday morning plenary that took place at the conference. It's titled Black LGBTQ Plus Representation and Entertainment, moderated by Victor Jackson, featuring Asian, Delon Burnside, and Nico Anon. Now, Asian is a beautiful R&B singer, okay, doing her thing, also the voice of Karma and Karma's World. Delon Burnside is known for his role as Ricky on Pose, right? And then Nico Anon is known, okay, worldwide, <laughs> for his role as Uncle Clifford in P Valley. I'm not giving y'all a whole conversation, but the second half, which leads into the Q&A, I really hope in the face of even the news that I reported on today, that you find hope in this conversation, that we are still moving forward, that we are not going back in the closet, okay? That we are not going anywhere period. So stay close because we got to pay the bills. We got a few commercials, okay? (laughs) But then we'll be back with this really, really dope conversation. Stay close. Hey, I'm Anna. And I'm Adele. And this is the Head Nod. Season one, Black Life at a PWI. (laughs) It's an unfiltered take on black life and predominantly white spaces. Why did you choose to go to a PWI? So there wasn't really a big HBCU presence. I actually won a scholarship to the local community college and I was like, I'm not doing that. I got to get up out of here. I really wanted to go to a school and, and think of a place where I would be able to make a difference in terms of the experience. We've all got our reasons for going to a PWI. In the process, we learned some things. Especially that music. Chile. Party on at this PWI. What is your rock on moment? Oh man. Sweet Caroline. And the second one was Don't Stop Believing by Jeremy. <laughs> oh, those are our songs. <laughs> those are the two we made. It wasn't all good. 
There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. I don't know if Adele remember this, but do you remember when we decided to put on like a Black History Month special? Yes. And people was like harassing us and tearing down our posters and calling us all type of N words. And I think that was the moment where I was just like, I'm, I'm over this. It wasn't all bad. <clears throat> um, I have a question. How did you know? How did you know? I did almost join a frat, but then like day of, I didn't do it. And so I was very anti-frat along with these folks, but we're like, we still want to throw parties and have a good time. So we just kind of created our own frat, which we called the U, short for the union, it was the U. But it all was black life at a PWI. And we get into it. Join us for raw conversations, laughs, and head nods as we share our stories about the Black experience in predominantly white spaces. Tune in every Tuesday for a new episode wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. What has 144 players, 12 teams, and one league that you should tap into? If you guessed the WNBA, you already know. If you didn't, We'll get you up to speed real quick. My name is Money, and this is Rebound Revolution, bringing you the revolutionary on and off the court happenings in the W. Join me and a special guest each week as we watch them work. Listen to Rebound Revolution wherever you get your podcast. If you're hearing this, it means we didn't sell this ad space. If you're hearing this, it means running ads on our podcast actually can work. You see what I did there? You see this real life example? You got an event. Do you have an organization? Do you got something you need to get the word out about? We got rates starting as low as $100. Check the link in our show notes for more information. You are now tuned in to higher frequencies. We do this frequently. Turn your radio station to E3 for that decency. Listen to great music and the latest movement. Safe listening for anyone that's tuned in. Who you waking up to? Anna Deshaun, Q Crew and Friends. It's that real talk. On live radio with the spins. You caught up in traffic, frustrated. Just check in with E3 to shift your vibrations and get elevated. That's queer radio done right. Choose to be yourself. That's the only way to live life. And that's how it's done here. This will actually be a really great conversation to um, go down the line. But each of you have like a specific captive audience based on like the ways that you've shown up in media. How are you um, paving a way for more people like you to take up space in the same way that you take up space? Existing. Mm. Let me just expound on that because. I know that in different spaces, people or like labels will be like, hey, Asana, can you do this? Or can you like, you know, you know when you bring girls up on stage, can you bring a guy up? And it's just like, no, yes. no, I can't. Because why would I do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> I love you all. But like, why, why do I have to do that? Yeah. For what? Yeah. To appease you? That makes no sense because that's not the life I live. So you want me to be out here being fraudulent? Yes. There's enough of those. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm going to do what I do. But I feel like constantly existing and showing up authentically as yourself in these spaces is what opens the door for others to do it. Because you, you stand firm and it's like, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't care if you are a major label. I don't care if you do sign the checks. I said no. So... You can do it. Right. I, listen, I'll sing the song. You bring them up and you do the whole little loop-de-loop that you want to go down. But I'm, as long as I stay authentic to who I am and make sure that when I see someone else coming up like me, that I can help put them in position just by existing, that is an, that's, that's, a, that's a, a lot to me. Yeah. You know, like, even... So I don't know if this is the true statistic or not. I was told it from Mattel, but... It could be a lie. It's the first time a, a black queer woman has had a voice in a doll. Why has that not happened yet? It's just a voice. So me existing and, 
and stepping into rooms that I step into and doing things that I never thought I'd do is what opens the door for everybody else to do it. And do either of you want to add anything to hit it? I mean, I think that it's a lot of um, audacity to dare to be who you are or even to try to take up space to define who you are. I think a lot of times this industry can try to make you a carbon copy of someone else. So I don't think that anyone else can take up space the way that I take up space. And I don't think that I can take up space the way that anyone else can take up space. But I feel like, you know, um, this industry coming up for me tried to make me something else. I cannot tell you how many times people have had the audacity to tell me, oh, I thought that, oh, you're playing a queer character and I thought that he would be more light-skinned. Mm. Oh, what the fuck is that thing? There is, there, the, the colorism that exists in this industry um, is still real today yes. and how people can correct that. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I first was graduating from college and to leave a conservatory and doing the whole thing, I couldn't even have my facial hair. People are always looking to you for something. So I say, how do you not look at yourself in the mirror for that very same thing before I give it to you? It's mine. That part. Do you understand what I mean? So I don't think about how to change somebody's mind because it's mine first. And having that audacity to, to be yourself and and all of those things that we hear that can be lofty and be like, how do I attain that? I do it by having my biscuits and gravy because I'm gonna stay thick. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. This is my natural body size. Yes. Yes. Now when I run around on set every day for like 14 hours, she do snatch up. She do snatch up. I she do snatch up. But it's still gonna have the bounce back. Yeah. It's still gonna have the trickle. Like, Cause where is it going? Where is it going? That's what I'm saying. And this is what they're paying for anyway. Okay. You know, so okay. I say let it be. Um, so I believe, you know, it's awesome to be a part of just different projects and be able to bring a level of authenticity beyond identity. Yeah. Where I can say, you want some neck bones and some hot wall corporate, and you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Where that space, so even as I move through life and all these people, more people are starting to see our light, it didn't change before that light hit us. Yep. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so when you say, how do you take up space? I don't think you can wait for some light to hit you or for somebody to see you before you can become. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I think that, I mean, well, whether you say you discover in the dark or not, but you have to know that kind of stuff for yourself. Otherwise, you will get lost and you will be, you know, you'll be tossed to and fro trying to figure. And there's a difference between, oh, I want to try this. Versus I'm doing it because they said I had to do this to be successful or to be accredited. You know, that that something for me is where um, it gets it just gets really shifty and, and, and dangerous because you're waiting on somebody else to define you and you sit up here like what's the definition, Mama? What that mean? And what she said, look it up. Right. Always yeah. you go discover it for yourself. Uh -huh. Right. What it sound like. Yes. Put it together, you know. So that's what I was at. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And I, I think that 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 energy is definitely my experience too. Um, I I was fortunate enough to win an Emmy Award for something that I never thought would do it, and it was really just me being me, me showing up in in a space saying this is my story and this is my experience. I did a, a documentary project called Pride Land with PBS, um, going across the country, across the South, meeting LGBTQ people, talking about their experience. Me going back to my hometown, talking about my experience with my family and my church. Um, and that was a passion project 
me just being me, talking to people, having conversations, and I'm literally laying in the bed watching the 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 daytime Emmys, and it won. I had no, I had no concept that that could yeah. be a possibility. Yeah. Um, but I think it it is the power of what Nico was talking about. It's just like just being who you are, not being afraid to lean in and take up space. Yeah. Um, it's I'm continuously learning that. I haven't, I don't feel like I perfected it. You know, it's something that I think I struggle with. Um, I think we all struggle with it in, in varying degrees, but especially when the light hits you, like you said, once the, you have to be doing the work before the light hits you, but when it hits you, it's like, okay, what you gonna do now? Can you breathe into everything that you were before? Or will you be afraid to do that because everybody's watching now? And will you try and replicate some other things that you have seen work for other people? Or that the agent or the manager says might be a good idea? Uh, or can you listen to the internal compass, the internal guidance system? And so I'm getting better and better every day at being able to listen to the internal compass and see it even though I got the light in my face, even though there's so many other voices in my head than just my own. And so it's like that work, it, it doesn't stop, it continues and it gets even harder because there's so many other things, there's so many other factors and other pressures. Yeah. But cheers to existing authentic, like authentically and audaciously and leaning in and, and committing to the process of evolving and expanding and discovering new things about yourself and finding ways to use that in your interactions with others. Because that's literally, that's how you shift the narrative. That's how you shift the narrative. And that's how that narrative shifts in our community circles like this and how we see it shift in media and how we see it shift in music and in film and in documentaries and on TV. It's because you live authentically, you live audaciously, you lean in and you continue to discover and learn. And I think that is something that we can all take away for sure. Now, you've watched these beautiful people speak, but if you have any questions for them, there's some mics here <laughs> and there. So I want to use our last 10 minutes for some questions. If anyone has any questions, don't be shy. Also, don't knock over anybody <laughs> running to the mic stand. We'll start here. Hello, how y'all doing? Good. Um, Good. So Nico and Delon kind of like touched on like, be, you know, being yourselves, being authentic, and looking out to others for stuff that we find to try to validate ourselves and stuff like that. I, my question is, what advice would you give to us sitting down here who, like, want to be where you all are or want to at least elevate to the point that you, you guys are, but with, at the same time, keeping our authenticity? Yeah. Be okay with your process. Some people call that struggle. I call it process. I am the same man that used to choreograph in New York City, at dance theater workshop, go over here to Lion King, go over here to the agency where I was a print agent, and then have to move out to California because I don't know, I want more. I want more. Now I get out to California. Don't nobody know me. Don't nobody know what the credits of Yale Rep means. They don't know what it means when you say the Guthrie Theater. They don't know all of that stuff. All of that stuff, I don't call it shit. I'll call it the stuff that built me, my experience. They didn't know it. Agents looking at me and saying, oh, you're good, but mm, what class are you in? What class am I in? Here's the resume. You see that, those degrees right there? Do you see these institutions right there that I teach? What class you gonna teach? What is Sheila gonna teach me? You understand what I'm saying? Great. Oh, but here in LA, you need to be a part of a class to be a part. Oh, y'all are on that. So, Nico know who Nico is. Let me go get this job at this hotel. I'm gonna work at Marriott Courtyard on the in-between. I'm gonna work this audit shift overnight because I'm going to do this in the daytime and do what I got to do. None of those people in that hotel knew who I was. They didn't know my history. 
They didn't know that resume. I did not expect them to. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm good. And I say that, it's great. These accolades and, and, and acknowledgement, that stuff is great. It's, it's really great. But I'm going to tell you the real deal. What's your name? Devin. Devin. When my ass walked up on that stage at the NAACP, I had no idea what the hell was going on. I said, that, I wasn't trying to show out. I said, hold up. Let me take my time. Because, bitch, I work for this. Yeah. And for my community to be so audacious in a space where they ain't, they act like we ain't never existed. Okay. I said, the NAACP. Yes. Go acknowledge a motherfucker player, Uncle Clifford. Yeah. And then all of these pictures of this non binary person, all of, I'm going to take my time. Yes. So don't be afraid of your process because my shine right now would not be if it happened like that. Uh, yes. It would not be. There have been too many people that came before me. Oh, Nico, you're humble. No, I'm not humble. I'm real. I know who came before me. You have to. They're going to start your twin, your trans. They're going to start this. They, like, oh, what, uh, what's the one that they say? Uh, Lafayette ran. Uh, or walk so Uncle Clifford can run or something like that. Yes. What else you want me to say? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who didn't know? Who didn't know Nelson? Do you know what I'm saying? Who didn't know Billy? Who didn't? Yes. Bitch, I'm not the only one. Yes. Never gonna be the only one. I'm making room for somebody else. Now, who the next thing will come through? Come on. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so don't wait. I, 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 I in my, my, my teaching and my, my own personal philosophy, I, I kind of fight up against that whole thing of get to where you are. You can't get to where I am. But it's stuff before you see me. That's what, you, that's what the fuck you see. I, have, I learned this stuff by having directors like like George Faison, like, you know, Bill T. Jones that's throwing stuff at you and you're like, what? And you gotta figure that out. It doesn't scare me if somebody talked about, oh, see, it was seven pounds of pressure, now it's 300 pounds of pressure. Yes. Then <laughs> you want all of it. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? And that's only because I had space. I, I took up space to say, Nico, handle this. Talk about that. Oh my, like, it, I, you don't get you don't get strong without tests. All right. So that's yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? Uh, I was like, do you what do you um but since you addressed me, I feel compelled to say something. <laughs> um uh, in addition, the only thing I will add to that is I saw myself being exactly where I am today before I was here. Mm -hmm. And you have to see it before you see it. That's correct. Not only do you have to see it, but you have to feel what that feels like. You have to feel, you have to today know that you are the embodiment of that right where you are today before you ever actually see it manifest. And so before I was doing all the things that I'm doing, I already knew I was that Delon. I already knew I was a star, you know? Um, so when people ask me, what are you doing? You know, you're moving to New York from Pensacola, Florida, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna star on Broadway. I'm gonna be a lead on, in a Broadway musical. What? You're gonna do what? You 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 leave in Pensacola, Florida, and you're gonna do what? In a year I had my Broadway show booked. So a lead. Um and that is to say that I saw it, I knew it, I felt it, I believed it. 
So whatever it is that you want to do, I don't know what that is. I don't know what's in your spirit. I don't know what you're, what you've been called to. But you have to believe it. You have to trust it. You have to know that it's for you, and it wants you just as bad as you want it. Yeah. Mm. I love that. I love that. We're gonna take two more questions. Two more. Hi. Oh, I'm Koshiba. I use they them pronouns. Um, I'm just really excited to see all of y'all. Like, I'm a big fan of everybody. I have y'all on Spotify. I'm watching you. <laughs> but um, I just want to thank y'all for like everything that y'all been saying. Um, I've really been receiving it. Um, one question I have is, um, what do you think is the future of Black queer and trans media representation? Or alternatively, um, what makes you excited for the future um, in music, media, um, movies in general? Thank you. You want to start on you? I'll start. But I'll add to the last question and answer that question. Okay. What I wanted to say is study your craft. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Study yes. your craft. Everything they both said, but study your craft. Because you're coming in with odds against you already. Right? And then there's a lot of us trying to come in at the same time. How you walk into a room authentically yourself, but also know your shit. Yeah, that part. You know what I mean? If you're going to put out music, I'm sorry, I don't know if I can curse, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Yes. Everybody be cursing It's early point. in the morning, y'all. I can't... I you won't remember it by three. I'm sorry. But like... She meant that. I did. Because... <laughs> Okay, I'm working like some some an artist or a few like a lot of people reach out to me in DMs say, Can I send you music or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I listen to almost everything people send me. Almost everything. If I get it and I can't even hear it because you didn't mix it, you didn't take the time to study your craft and learn different things like that that's important, then you miss an opportunity that fast. As opposed to someone else who did that due diligence. And I'm like, oh my God, that would work for this. Let me just send this to my label. And they're looking for a sound that sounds like this. It's something as easy as that. Mm-hmm. As you, number one, being who you are. Believing that you're going to be who you already are. Like you already have enough right now as you exist to be everything you want to be. Right? Walk in that. But then also study your craft. Show up prepared. Show up over prepared. Be 100% authentically you. Don't let any person, thing, or action sway you or move you out of your energy or your experience that you're trying to give people. Because you are the person that controls that. So that I would just ask that you'll craft. Now, <laughs> now, the other question. Um, I think the future is bright yes. because we're all here. Yes. We're all talking about the things. We are, you know working towards knocking down walls. We're showing up authentically as ourselves. We're writing our own stories. We're writing stories of our friends, our our community. We're existing. I think that alone, plus, you know, fighting off whatever politicians we gotta fight off is God. God only knows. I think us coming together in spaces like this and sharing our experience and telling you show up like yourself means that it's going to be great in the future because now you have representation of what that looks like and you know you can do it so now it's up to you to do it you like Nike yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I think um, the future is without the the first two words that you use, black queer. I think it's the future of music. I think it's the future of media and entertainment. I think it's, I love being black. I love being queer. I don't love having to say it. Does that make sense? I think so often we get in these spaces and we talk about the experience of being black and gay or bi or trans or queer and all these things and it's so important to talk about it so that we understand the nuance of what 
those lived experiences are. And then I just want us to stop talking about it. I want us to start walking in who we, who the fuck we are and just owning that the world is also ours. We, we don't have to add the label. We don't have to add an explanation or a, a qualifier. Her music is music. Yes. Period. It's music, period, that people need to know and need to hear and experience. His artistry is his artistry, and so is mine, and it does not require a moniker. And so for me, that's what I feel the, the future is, is us taking up space, telling our stories without having to explain shit to anybody. Period. Just turning on the radio, playing your playlist, and if you the song and you hear this deep baritone bass voice singing and he say him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't think nothing about it, you know. Um, I do believe that that time will come. I do believe that we are in the shift of it. You know, the pendulum always swings in, in both directions and before it finds the middle. I believe that uh, being vocal and being um, present and walking in yourself um, authentically is a part of that pendulum swing, you know? Um, and it happens, this, this is the part that I think we all forget. Sometimes you think that it happens only in the media, but it happens when you go to the grocery store the more people see all people. When I look at my nieces and nephew and they talk about other kids in their school, you know, they're talking about non-binary children and they're talking about people with different pronouns and parents are, you know, it's different now. You, you, you. That, I think, makes even more of an impact. Yeah. Last one that you want to know. Hey, boo. Yes, y'all already know this DJ speaks. I want to say personally, I don't have a uh, a question, but I just want to have a comment. Um, as a parent of a non-binary beautiful individual, thank you for reinforcing what I've always told them that the future was going to look like. Mm. So I want to say just thank you to all, not just you all, all of you all in the space for doing that because when there were times when kids were beating on them and doing all kinds of things, I was like, you just wait. And normalizing, we sat and that was one thing that we did on the regular was actually watching, sitting down every weekend, that was our thing, we did our thing, we sat and we ate. And to be able to see these spaces, these faces and for them to sit there and say, Ma, that can be me. So I want to say thank you to each and every one in this room, you on the stage, each and every one that is present. Thank you for always authentically being who you are and always doing that. And as a parent, it reinforces what some of us are teaching at home, that you are valuable, you are beautiful, you are loved, and you are what the world is waiting for. Yes. And thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for believing in love and sharing love and like that. We're live streaming, y'all. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. We were tag teaming um, because I was the one with the question. But anyway, um, <laughs> so most of you are, are extremely confident. So can each of you sort of just sort of mention, is there a person or a couple of people in your lives in those early years that, that really helped you instill confidence in yourself and to become who you are today? Mm -hmm. It's a really difficult question for me to answer for a couple of reasons, but I will say one of the things that Avian just said is the main source of my confidence, preparation. Preparation, studying, um, having information, training, that's where I find the bulk of my confidence comes from is knowing that I know that I know that I know what I know. And so when I walk in the room, I have done all the work already and all I have to do is show up. So that's really where I believe my confidence has always stemmed from is rehearsing, practicing, reading. I love a good book. 
I, I like to study. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a scholar. I'm a student. I think that confidence is an ever-growing thing. I don't think there's ever a point where you become too confident yeah. or the opposite. You know, I flew to New York for this um, event where um, my cartoon character, Karma, from Karma's World, um, we had just put out all the dolls, right? And then I go into the store and I meet these little kids, these little girls. This is one in particular who had on a tutu, some shark shoes, and a princess hat. And I was like, yes, sis. <laughs> all of it. All of it. <laughs> all the things, right? And so I say, who's your favorite character on Karma's World? And she said, well, it's you, duh. <laughs> and I was just like, all those little girls who look up to that character give me confidence because there was a point and when I was doing or at the beginning of that show where I had to re-audition for the role and I had to go against all the kids that Netflix wanted to put up for that thing. I had been playing her for 10, 14 years prior. I was confident because I knew that I created her. I know how she laughs because I made the laugh up. You know, I know what, how she squeals when she's excited because I created that too. So when I went in to re-audition, I beat all them kids because I was confident. And then to see that confidence pour into other little girls when they say they want to, they love their hair. Or they are, or they have that, they have a doll that looks like them, or they had a whole birthday party full of karma stuff. That gives me confidence. Because I didn't have that growing up. And so knowing that I can provide that for a completely new generation of little humans gives me confidence that I'm doing what I'm meant to do here. And so all the other things, the life things that make it kind of fluctuate, they don't matter as much. Because it's bigger than me. The gifts we have are bigger than us. At the core, again, not the black and the queer thing, we're human first, right? And I think that those things that humanize our experience from things that we do or, you know, roles that we play also gives us confidence that, okay, I did what I meant to do. I look at confidence. It's so interesting because I feel like people say it or ask that question and it's void of doubt. Mm. Or it's void of, let me do some self-assessment here one second. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Before you step out, you always look, do I look okay? Yeah, yeah. Is this right? No, I gotta go put a little bit more on. Hold one second. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta go take something off. This is, you know what I mean? So I feel like confidence always comes with the opposite. So I say, don't be afraid of that. I say, don't sit in either side of it too long because then you get cocky and then you get over here, you got nervous and you didn't sunk into some oblivion and you, yes, you, yes. you're doing it what you say you want to do. I always saw my Uncle Bill, and my Uncle Bill had these bangles. Yeah. And every time, you know, you have your Thanksgiving dinner, it was over at Emma's house, you know, for Christmas, and I remember he would reach over my side one time, and he was like going for the green beans. And it was just clack, 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 clack. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And here I am, this child, and I was like, oh, please, I don't want Uncle Bill, don't. They gonna be saying I'm gay. <laughs> you know they already know Uncle Bill, because I'm getting up giving a show at Family Reunion. Yeah, But I don't want, I see how they, they talk about you. My Uncle Bill had two, two children. Uncle Bill was with some woman sometime in life. Uncle Bill made some children. There was a beard somewhere, but Uncle Bill was Uncle Bill. You know what I'm saying? And here I was, little Nico, like, I don't know, Uncle Bill, I ain't ready to be Uncle Bill. <laughs> you know, and I think because that was something that at that time I was, I shied away from. I never, I, I've been gay all my life, but I never felt the need to have to tell people I was gay. Cause I wasn't sleeping with nobody. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I remember in high school, I remember in high school, they was like, Nico's gay, Nico's gay. And then I always had me a good girl, good kid drunk. Uh -huh. He ain't gay, uh -huh. he's a fuck. Yeah. You don't need him. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? And I feel like I, I, I wasn't even being bothered with all of that. I was like, Bitch, I'm about to be a star. I gotta, I gotta get out of Detroit. Yeah. We down here in the dregs. Let me yeah. figure out how I'm gonna get in a show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was doing all of that stuff. And so I think for me, Uncle Bill was someone that I did not want to disappoint. How dare I see an elder not be able to have space for whatever reason? Whether it was the times, whether it was the family, what all the things. But then I said, it can't be the family because my grandmama asked me, was I gay? And said, because you know your Uncle Bill, he was a gay. That's what she said. He was a gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my grandmother told me. Yeah. And then she said, just don't go on her own, though. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what she said. I kid you not. The roof of the roof, that's where it comes from. You ain't never been on the road. Never been on the road. Look at that. I ain't never been on the road. Look at that. That's what it is. So I think that, you know, we have these superstars. We have these people that we can look at literally in our families. You know what I mean? Um, and that confidence that you asked about to me, it comes from, for me personally, it comes from when I hear people talk about sitting down with their family and, and, and participating in our art. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. This is a whole, I'm in a, I'm in a moment and I know I'm in a moment. I'm a part of a project that people still talk about and it ain't even, you know, we ain't got no new episode. Everything that you just, you, you just have your opinion, when new seeds come. <laughs> I wonder sometimes, is this what Sherman Hemsley felt like? <laughs> Is this what Esther Rowe felt like? Yes. Because that I still watch Good Times to this day. Yeah. Oh, you are part of something that's gonna last forever. It's gonna yeah. touch generation upon generation upon generation. That's a gift. Yes. I don't take that for granted. So you damn right. You see confidence, because baby, that's joy. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. I don't take that for granted. I don't care who gets some statue, whatever. I got people, I got humans. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how it, it's affecting people. There's other parents. There was a father who stopped me at Essence Fest and gave a similar testimony and said, I think my child is like Uncle Clifford. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we watched the show and I learned how to love my child by seeing the rep. And I was like, Jesus, this, this is why I was stressed that whole week in that episode. So because it's doing something for somebody else oh, that yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. So sometimes realizing that you're the echo from you living out loud, it's not for you. It is for somebody else. It is for somebody else. So for me, that's where that confidence, so you say comes from. Because I still look like, damn, bitch, you got a new varicose man. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's real. It's real. There's no, like, there's no difference. Everybody up here bleeds. Everybody up here gets tired. Everybody don't want to go to the gym. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm going to say. Yes. Well, thank you all so much for joining us this morning. I hope that you have enjoyed this conversation. And I hope that if you don't remember anything else, you remember that you desire to live, you desire to love, and you desire to dance. We'll turn it back over to the hands Give of the Give a round of applause. Yeah. I really hope y'all enjoyed that conversation. Now, let's close out with a word because you already know Anna's always got a word. During the conference, SOS, there was a pretty divine moment that took place. The founder of Saving Ourselves, Symposium, Marvell Terry, moderated the Saturday morning plenary called We Built What We Didn't See. The panel was powerful. And at the end, Marvell did something I've never seen before. He washed the feet of the leaders on the panel. 
and invited Granny to join them. Granny is a 75-year-old trans woman who exudes love and joy, okay, and she looks fabulous. Music played, and he did something so sacred as washing someone's feet, something so divine. And I was there to bear witness. And so in that spirit, and in the spirit of building what we do not see in the world. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I left you with these lyrics. I just got to bring them back because this song, Who I Am by Wynn Starks, I have literally been playing it almost every day. And so just go download it. You already know a link is in the show notes. But Wynn says this, pardon my imposition, but this is my conviction. I need to get this off my mind. I got to be me. Gotta be I. Gotta be who I am inside. Can finally breathe. Taking it in. Look at me flying. It's always been there. It just took me a minute to find it. If I were to be anybody else, I'd just be hiding. Who I am. Who I am. If you're listening to this podcast, I hope that you never hide. I hope that you have the courage of O'Shea, I hope you have the courage of Jaunty to be exactly who you were divinely created to be. Because I believe we are wonderfully and perfectly made. Till next week, family. Peace. If you enjoyed what you heard, Rate and review us inside your favorite podcasting app. This podcast is written and produced by me, Anna Deshawn. Podcast editing by Experience J of Just Listen Media. And brought to you by E3 Radio, your number one queer radio station playing queer music and reporting on queer news in high rotation.